ان الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويلكم تو قران بيج ا دي توداي ان شاء الله وي ويل بي كولكتنج جيمز فروم سوره النبا ويتش از سوره نمبر 78 ان ذا نوبل قران سوره النبا از ا مكي سوره ذا ورد النبا مينز ذا تايدينجز اور ذا نيوز This surah has 40 verses and this was revealed between the period 614 to 618 AD. Now surah Naba was revealed after the first uh, after a few years since Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam started preaching the message of Islam. One of the common questions that existed and that still exists today um, that people ask is when will the day of judgment take place will it ever come what will happen on the day of judgment and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in this surah the uh, events that will take place on the day of judgment and confirms that it actually will take place this is something that is absolutely certain and for sure and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of doing everything he wants and intends to do so the theme of the surah is judgment day rewards and the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's find out what is in surah an-naba allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first few verses of surah an-naba says what are they arguing about what they what are they asking of each other about and then says that it is about the news and the news here means the coming of the day of judgment when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam told his people about yawmul qiyama they started arguing about whether it would really happen or not people do the same thing nowadays when they are told about the day of judgment and and that it sh- it surely will come they get so busy arguing about something that they have no knowledge of they fail to see that all of their arguments are just conjecture and wishful thinking it would be better to spend that time preparing for the day instead so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the disbelievers the following rhetorical question so that they will stop arguing and start preparing he asks them what are you arguing about is it the great news and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls yawmul qiyamah annaba in azim annaba al azim meaning the great news because this day will be the most important event in all of creation it is the most important news that anyone will ever hear about allah wants them to realize that arguing about something that they have no knowledge of is useless what's really important is that this day is coming and allah tells us the deniers in in these ayahs that they will surely be convinced when they see it but then it will be too late Then in the next few verses Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a few examples of his creation to prove that he is indeed more than capable of making the day of judgment actually take place. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah has created the earth secure and comfortable for us like a bed. So isn't Allah capable of of making something as great as the day of judgment too? And then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has made the mountains like stakes to stabilize the earth so we can walk and build upon it safely so isn't allah capable of making something as great as yawmul qiyama allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says allah has made us in pairs male and female so that we can get married and have children allah has given us sleep so that we can rest and our bodies can repair themselves allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the night covering us in darkness as a trying as 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 a resting time to take a break from the activities of the day and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the day for us to be active and to get our work done and allah has made the sky which has seven strong levels above us and allah has made the sun to give us both light and warmth the sun's light makes it possible for us to see to see clearly during the day keeps the earth just the right temperature and makes plants grow allah has made the rain flowing from the clouds the rain gives us water to drink and wash with 
as well as water for our crops and animals. Allah has given us grain and vegetables as, in, as in, an, an enormous variety of healthy, delicious foods to enjoy and benefit from. This includes those that we dry and keep for, for later use as well as those that are eaten fresh. Allah has also given us lush gardens growing thick with all manner of all types of fruits and flowers and herbs to benefit us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create all these things, can he not bring judgment of day? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all of these examples to show that Allah is capable of doing whatever he intends. Therefore, if Allah says the day of judgment will come, the complexity and magnitude of this current creation proves that such a great event is easy for Allah to accomplish. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the day of judgment is already scheduled to happen at a certain time, not a second sooner or later. This decree has been set by Allah and only Allah knows the exact time. Neither the disbelievers nor any other creation has knowledge of the time and no one will ever find out. We will only know for sure the moment it actually happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the day of judgment will start with the blowing of the horn by the angel Israfil. When it is blown, everyone will be resurrected. Then the heavens will open up and the mountains will, will disappear. The earth will be a flat, wide plain and we will all be gathered there for judgment day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about the hellfire and what one gets there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the hellfire has been prepared for the disbelievers and they will see it clearly on that day. Once they enter there, they will stay there. Some people say it's okay if we go to the hellfire because they will only be there for just a few days. Even if what they say was true and it's not, the time in hellfire is not the same as the time we know it. Each day in hellfire is much longer than our whole life. And each year is much longer than we could even count. And that is not all. There is more punishment Allah will inform us in some of these ayahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the dwellers of hellfire will have nothing to, nothing to drink except boiling water and intensely cold Pus filled liquid. The boiling water will burn their insides while the intensely cold pus filled liquid from the sweat, tears and pus from the infected wounds of the people of hellfire. This drink smells bad, is dark in color and will not quench their thirst at all. This is what the people will drink in Jahannam, in hell. May Allah save us. From this punishment. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who go to hellfire will be there because they did not prepare for the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us who are these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to be ready for the day of judgment, a person needs to follow Allah's guidance and live a good life as defined by Allah, not by our own personal beliefs and whims. But those, who, but those who will be in hellfire are those who denied the day of judgment in this life and argued about Allah's message. Everything that Allah plans, he has put in a written record, no exceptions. Day of judgment is in this written record also. And those who deny it, instead of getting the good, they expect from Allah will only get an increase in their punishment because they did not take Allah's laws seriously. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some people may ask, why will people be punished so severely? Now after all, many of the people, they, they probably mean well and they expected that Allah would have mercy on them for not realizing the truth. Now let's imagine this. If there was a farmer who inherits a large fertile farm, he moves his family to the farm and thinks that life will now be happy and easy for him. What he does 
What he does not realize is that having a farm is a lot of hard work and planning. The other farmers in his town know that without a good harvest, their families will starve and they will lose their farms and they cannot pay their bills. So they take the job of farming seriously. The farmers must, long, must work long hours, invest money for the proper supplies and learn everything there is to know about farming in order to get the best and biggest harvest. The problem is this particular farmer is careless. He does not believe anything bad can happen to him or his farm. Because of a strong belief, he does not have to work hard. The farmer makes crucial mistakes throughout the growing season that will lead to terrible consequences at harvest time. First, he plants the wrong seeds and does not water them regularly. Then he fails to, put the, to pull, the, pull out the weeds and allows insects to infest his crops. Eventually, his fellow farmers, who all have fields full of ripening fruit and vegetables, warn him that his plants will never bear fruit, but he argues with them about things he has no knowledge of. When harvest time comes in the fall, the farmer harvests his plants and takes them to the market, but no one will buy his piles of insect-laden leaves and hardy weeds. Now the farmer is terrified that his family will starve through the winter and he will lose his farm because he has no money to buy food or pay bills. He now realizes that his fellow farmers were right, but it is too late. He did not put in the work needed to take care of the farm and he ignored the warnings of his fellow farmers. So now he will lose everything he has just because of incorrect beliefs. Now, what happened to this farmer? Was it unfair or unjust? This story shows us that having incorrect beliefs can lead to terrible consequences in this life. And this is not unjust or unfair, it is just reality. In the same way, a person's incorrect beliefs about the day of judgment can lead to terrible consequences in the next life. But this is not unjust or unfair, it is just reality. Those who do not believe in day of judgment think nothing bad can happen to them because of their beliefs. The, believer, the disbelievers are not preparing a harvest of good deeds for themselves on the day of judgment. They are not doing salah, they're not fasting, they're not paying zakah, nor are they staying away from the things that Allah has made haram or asked us to stay, from, to stay away from. So just like the farmer with the bad harvest had nothing good to sell at the market after the harvest, they will have nothing good to put on their scale to earn Jannah or to protect themselves from the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us about what do the believers get? What do those people get who actually care about the day of judgment and work towards it? Now the situation for those who have correct beliefs about Allah and who do the hard work to get ready for the day of judgment will be very different. Just like the careful farmers who followed the rules and had good harvests, the believers who follow Allah's rules will come on day of judgment with scales full of good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those. They will enter Jannah and will be given everything that their hearts desire. They will have lush green gardens to live in, delicious fruits to eat, beautiful companions of the same age to live with, cups to drink from that never empty, and they will never hear anyone saying bad things or lying. The people who, got, who, who will get this reward will be so happy that they will never want anything else and they will enjoy this reward forever. Sounds great, right? Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the rewards of Jannah are amazing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that they are not free. On the day of judgment, every creation will come in front of Allah, even the angels, the jinn, and all the animals that were ever created. No one will be allowed to speak without Allah's permission. If Allah gives permission to speak to anyone, they will only say what is correct and true. Allah is the one who will be in total control on that day. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the last couple of verses that day of judgment is real. Anyone who wants to be welcomed into Allah's Jannah on that day 
must work hard in this life, doing what Allah told them to do and staying away from what Allah has forbidden them to do. Otherwise, on the day of judgment, the disbelievers will see the harvest of their deeds and realize that they did not prepare for this day, but then it will be too late. Then all they have will have to they will have left to say is, I wish I were dust. Now, why will they want to be dust? They will say this because one of the first things to happen on the day of judgment is that Allah will give all the weak animals a chance to give to get their rights. And then Allah will command that all the animals become dust because the animals are not rewarded or punished with hellfire or with Jannah. For example, a hornless, a hornless sheep, a sheep who was, give, who was hurt by a sheep with horns will be given the chance to fight back equally with the other sheep that harmed it. And then both sheep will become dust. So when the disbelievers see that, the, see that the animals become dust and they do not have to go to hellfire, they wish themselves to be dust as well. They think that if they are dust, they will not have to be judged by Allah, but they will not get their wish. May Allah protect us from in such from being in such a state where we would have to make this wish. Now is the time for a self check. Some questions we need to ask ourselves as we ponder over these verses of Surah an -Naba. Do I believe firmly the day of judgment is going to take place? Do I look around to see and learn lessons from the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I make effort to know what will happen on day of judgment so I can be prepared for it? Do I want to avoid drinking hot, pus-filled liquid and burning in fire of hell and make effort to avoid it? Do I want to be of those who will be happy and looking forward to meeting Allah and make effort for it? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to fulfill the rights of the Quran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.